In this video, we'll go through a step-by-step -step example of how you would take an existing Tailwind CSS version 1 website and upgrade it to Tailwind CSS 2.0. So we're going to start with this landing page example and you can see a title, we've got some marketing copy and then we get a team section with some fancy little hover effects and finally we have a call to action here and you can see there's some focus styles on the button and the input field. So let me go back up the page quickly and let's make a few notes like the color here or in the typography we have this link that changes color on hover and this block code here. Like I mentioned before, on hover in the team section, we have this little rotation happening on the little avatars. So this website is currently using Tailwind CSS version 1.9.6, and we're also using two Tailwind plugins, custom forms and typography. Okay, let's try to upgrade all of that to Tailwind CSS 2.0 and see what happens. Before we start, I just wanna mention that I have this exact website in a different URL here, and we're going to use this as a before after reference as we start building the site. So that's the Tailwind One site here, which is now exactly as the one we're going to work in right now. First thing first, I'll go in my terminal. So the first thing we'll need to do is install the latest version of Tailwind. So I'll go npm install Tailwind CSS at latest. And I'll also install the latest version of post CSS at latest, and auto prefixer. Let's do this. Okay, it's done, nice. And since we're using the typography plugin, we'll also install the latest version of this npm install at tailwind css slash typography at latest. Nice. Let's start our project again and see what happens. Okay. Uh, it looks pretty bad, uh, but don't worry, there's actually not that much to do. And also keep in mind that this example was built to showcase all the things that would break and you would need to update when upgrading to 2.0. If I toggle between this site and the reference site that I saved before, you can see that the color has changed a little bit, the heading here has changed size. Uh, obviously, we've lost all the typography styles. Down in our team section, looks like we've lost some of the colors for some of the team members. Uh, we've also lost the spacing between each card. And we also don't have the nice little rotate on hover anymore. Finally, our call to action down here at the bottom looks a little bit poor. We've lost the border, we've lost the focus states, uh, the button has lost its color, etc. Let's go through all these things step by step and you'll see it's actually not that bad. The first thing I'll do is make these two plugins that we're using work again. So if I scroll down here, you can see that for the typography plugin, I have added a bunch of customizations. To make it work in Tailwind 2, we need to move this away from the theme directly, and instead we need to put this in extend. So what happens is when it's directly in the theme, it will completely override the plugin, where now that it's in extend, it will add our customization on top. If I save now, you can see that we have reclaimed some of the styles. The block code here is still not styled like we want, and this is because uh, another subtle change happened, and we'll cover that in a little bit, is in Tailwind 2.0, the default key in lowercase here has changed to uppercase. I'll talk more about that later, but for now, let's change this to default in uppercase and see what happens. Let's wait a couple of seconds. And as you can see now, our typography starts to look like it was before, except the colors. So if I pull up the reference, you can see we have this nice teal color, but the rest of it is now in place in our new site. Nice, so colors aside, our typography is back. For the other plugin, the custom forms, we actually need to migrate to a new plugin altogether. So in the terminal, I will uninstall the at Tailwind CSS custom forms plugin, and instead we'll install the plugin called at Tailwind CSS slash forms. This is a new plugin that is required to work with 2.0. So before I can start my project again, I need to go back to the top of a config file and here where we require the custom forms plugin, we'll change this to forms because this is the name of the new plugin. So I'll start the server again and see what happens. So now it looks like our input is nicely styled again. And we also have focus styles again as you can see, the design decision is quite different here, but let's see how we can easily change that. 
One thing to know is in the new forms plugin, we actually do not need to have a form input class. Instead, the plugin relies on the type attribute to apply styles. Instead of generating a component class, the new forms plugin basically extends the base layer in Tailwind CSS and applies default styles to the inputs using the type attribute. As you can see, I have removed the form input class and it still works. So let's make focus styles that look a bit similar to what we had before. Here I'll add focus and use a ring utility, which by default will be three pixels wide. And since the default color is a bit too dark compared to before, we'll use focus ring blue 300 maybe. Nice, so now it's much closer to what it used to be and as you can see, you can easily control how the focus styles look with the ring utilities. All right, next up, let's do some quick cleaning in our config file. I'll take the future and experimental keys here and completely remove these since they're not a thing anymore, at least at this moment in time. In our purge object here, you can see that we've passed an option object and we've whitelisted the example class. Now, whatever you pass to this option object is literally passed onto PostCSS. Tailwind 2 uses a new version of PostCSS which had a slight change in its API and the whitelist got renamed to safelist. Since we're passing this directly to PostCSS, we need to update this key to match the new shape of the options object. Okay, next up, we look at some class names that have changed names in Tailwind 2 and we need to update. I'll open the Tailwind CSS docs here and search for the upgrade guide. If I scroll down here, you can see that we need to update some of the rename utilities. The first group is the no wrap classes, which were renamed to no wrap without the hyphen between no and wrap. In our case, we don't have any of these class names in our project, so we can safely move on. The next group is the call gap and row gap utilities, which were renamed gap X and gap Y. These are used to apply some spacing or gap between grid cells. And if we look at our team section down here, you can see that this name change has broken our UI. In the HTML file, I'll go and find the grid wrapper, which is here. And of course, we're using the call gap and row gap at the small breakpoint. So I can replace call gap with gap X. And now our horizontal X axis gap has been fixed. Let's do the same for the row gap, which is going to become gap dash Y dash six and we should have our grid fixed once again. So a quick note, because they're both using the six level here, instead of gap X six and gap Y six, we could just use gap six. And the result is going to be exactly the same. While we were at it with the class name change, there's another class that we should change here. If I scroll down, you can see that the shadow outline, which was used for focus style, has been removed and should now be implemented with ring utilities like we've done for the form input. So I'll scroll down to the bottom of the file and look for our button. Here it is. And if I scroll horizontally, somewhere we should find, here it is, the focus shadow outline class. So I'll replace shadow outline with ring, which will apply the default three pixel ring. So let's try focus on our button and yep, the focus styles are back. So next is probably a good time to handle fixing the colors because our button here doesn't have the colors. Some of the team members don't have colors. This doesn't have colors. The link has only one of the two colors. Fixing these colors should take us much closer to the original site that we had before. I think now is a good time to mention that the colors in Tailwind 2.0 are not meant to be a drop-in replacement for the colors in Tailwind 1. They have different brightness and contrast characteristics. It's probably a better idea to stick with the colors you were using in Tailwind 1, being custom or the default colors. There's literally nothing wrong with doing that and this is what we're gonna do right now. Okay, so if you were using the default color palette in Tailwind 1, the easiest way to bring it back is to go in the upgrade guide on the Tailwind CSS docs and scroll down and find this colors object here. And I will literally grab the entire colors object from that file. I'll copy that and paste this directly into the theme object here since we want to overwrite the default colors from Tailwind 2 with the ones from Tailwind 1. I'll add a comma here and save. So I've pasted all the colors from Tailwind 1 here and by just doing this, if we go back to our website, it should look much closer to what we had. Look at this, we've got this color back here. Now our typography is the right color and hopefully all our team members have their colored circles. 
Also, our button down here also has its steel back. Very nice. Since we're on the topic of colors, I want you to pay attention to this third team member here in purple. If I look at the HTML for that user, you can see we've used custom colors instead of the default ones. Purple medium, purple light, and purple dark. You might have noticed earlier in our config file that we had some extended colors for this purple. If I scroll down here, you can see that in the extend object, we have extended the purple to use these three colors. Now, doing this in Tailwind 1 in the extend object would actually completely replace the purple object with this one. And this was the intention because we only use these three shades of purple in the whole project. The reason for this is in Tailwind 1, objects defined in extend would be shallow merge. In Tailwind 2, these extend objects get deep merged with the theme object. And as a result, we end up with these three purple colors getting merged with this purple object. I can demonstrate that with the IntelliSense extension. So if I start typing text dash purple, you can see that we have the values from 100 to 900, as well as light, medium, and dark. So if we wanted to recreate the exact same setup that we had, instead of extending our purple here, I would literally grab these three values and cut them, get rid of the whole colors extend, and completely replace my purple object here with the three values. If we check once again, now my text purple only has three values, light, medium, and dark. And it still works on the website because these are the only three purple colors that we were using throughout the project. Okay, let's keep moving. And something pretty sad, we have lost our nice hover rotate animations here. Let's figure out why it happened. If I look at one of the avatars here and scroll horizontally, you can see that we use a group hover rotate utility. This is actually not a default Tailwind utility, but something we had explicitly defined in our config file here. You can see that in my theme, I have completely overridden the rotate utilities with five values, XS, small, default, large, and extra large. Now, the default key in Tailwind 1 would signal that you wanted to generate a suffix-free utility. In other words, we would expect this utility to become rotate only as a utility. If we once again use the autocomplete to see our option with rotate, you can see that we have excess SM, but default has been output as rotate default. This is the reason why we have lost our rotation on hover because the rotate class by itself doesn't exist anymore. I've mentioned it earlier in the video, Tailwind CSS 2.0 renames the default key to uppercase default. And therefore, if you want to generate a suffix free utility, you need to rename this key to uppercase default. Let's try that. And now you can see that the rotate utility is suffix free and it's just rotate. So what this tells me is that should have fixed our problem. Let's go and verify and try hover. And sure enough, it's now working. Woohoo! Okay, I think our site is starting to look pretty good. There's one more small thing I wanna fix. And if we look at the page title here, you can see that in the reference site is slightly bigger. The reason for this change is Tailwind 2.0 has extended the font size scales with three new large values, 7, 8, and 9 XL. In the process, the 6 XL size has been downsized from 4 rems to 3.75 rem. This headline here in our project happens to be the 6 XL size. So if we wanted this headline to match exactly the previous design, what we would do is go in the Tailwind config and extend our font size object and we would define the 6XL key back to being 4 rem. And this is going to override the new value to match what it used to be and bring our size perfectly. So now if I toggle between the two, they're exactly the same. It's important to note as well that the font sizes in Tailwind 2.0 now come with a default line height added to them. This is not a problem in our project because if you've noticed right at the start, we had one of the future key called default line heights, which would take care of this. But this is definitely something to keep in mind. The new font sizes in Tailwind 2 with the default line heights are technically a breaking change. And depending on your project, you might want to explicitly just redefine the font sizes from Tailwind 1, just like we did for colors. If you don't, make sure you go and pair your font sizes classes with leading classes where needed to match the previous design. Looks like our project upgrade is done here. Depending on your project, you might have a few extra steps you need to go through. The best way to look at it is to go through the Tailwind CSS docs and look for the upgrade guide and go through the list here looking for a few steps I may not have covered in this video. 
And that's it. Good luck upgrading to Tailwind CSS 2.0 and hopefully this video helps you along the way.